Pregame.com. Pregame.tv discussing live wagering, ways you can make money playing. This is a new form of gambling that absolutely has taken the industry by storm. A lot of books here locally dealing the live wagering, Cantor Sports, uh, William Hill, uh, South Point now, and you can bet on your app. So at home, you've got, to, you've, you've got access to these lines. You don't even have to be in the sports book. Other places, just have it at the books. Um, Jay Cornegay over at the LVH puts it up on every major Sunday night game, Monday night game. I know they do that at the station, some other places as well. And just a few tips, um, observations. I am uh, a live wagering expert. I like to be playing a lot. Um, and I find that it's very unusual that I can't find a bet during live wagering that isn't better than what I'm able to play before the game starts. And it makes sense. If they're putting up a line after every play, which most aren't, but certainly after every timeout, it's like I have like 25 different wagering opportunities during a game with different parameters that they can take advantage of. A couple of tips. Uh, let's talk about weather. We just had one of the highest scoring weekends in the NFL despite very poor weather. Uh, the extreme example, a game I pushed on. I had the Eagles under 54, gave that one out, got the weather report, and it's 8 nothing at halftime. The live wagering on this game, amazing what happened. It started out at 54, and of course, there's the snow's accumulating, the wind's blowing. It crashes all the way down quickly to 41, then 38, then 31. Early in the second quarter with a score 0-0, it hit 23 and a half. I know Chuck Adele actually bet over 23 and a half, and it's amazing how a total that was lined at 54, closed 51, could become 24 halfway through the first half already. And we all know what happened. All heck broke loose. The wind stopped blowing. The snow was still on the ground, but it stopped snowing. We wound up with fit exactly 54 points. Could have even been more. And it goes to show how you can certainly have, I, I would say, the massive overreaction when you have a team, two teams that don't score at all. Your eyes tell you they're not going to be able to score all game. But the truth is teams in the NFL and in college make adjustments. They make corrections. It's Typically, when there's no scoring in a game, you want to be a contrarian and look towards going ahead and playing over once you get an extremely depressed total. Uh, the flip side is when you have a very high scoring game, you want to look for the point where the, the flip is going to get, they're going to throw the switch and go into a mode of where they're going to stop scoring. A great example of that, look no further than the Washington Redskins, totally mailing in the game against the Kansas City Chiefs. Andy Reid, not the type of guy that's going to rub it in your face. And when that game got out of hand at halftime, no surprise that the, they called off the dogs. Washington just wanted to get off the field, embarrassed, and Kansas City was perfectly happy leaving. So there was an example where your eyes tell you, oh, Kansas City's just going to score 100 in this game. But the truth is, that's typically not the case with most teams. And they're more likely happy to get, go ahead, hit the, hit the road, get on the plane, get home, get out there without a lot of injuries. And so that was a case where certainly under made sense. So I would say being a contrarian is very important. One other thing with the live wagering, be critical, it's critically important who starts with the ball. And you should always keep that in the back of your mind. Last night, well, on Monday night, the Cowboys started with the ball against the Bears, went down and scored. They're up 7-0. The Bears answer back at 7-7. Cowboys third possession wind up having to punt. At 7-7, the Bears had the ball. And you could say, well, nothing's really changed. This game was close to pick them. The Bears closed a one-and-a-half point favorite. Now the Bears have the ball at 7-7. We're early in the second quarter. We probably should make this uh, line one-and-a-half, right? Nothing has really changed. But there's a lot has changed because the Bears have the ball. And they're getting the ball to start the second half. A huge advantage. I could make a strong case for the Bears probably should have been minus three and a half at that point. Money line should have been about minus a dollar sixty-five. It wasn't nearly that high. And in a case where both offenses were moving the ball, you had to feel good about the Bears' chances. The fact that they were, in essence, getting that extra possession because they had the possession and they're getting the one to start the second half. That is enormous as far as the edge on a high totaled game. If it's true, if you've got the Jets playing against Buffalo, maybe it's not so important. But when the total's super high, having that extra possession in your back pocket, knowing you're going to get the ball in the second half, it's something that the markets just don't react to. Uh, one thing I want to mention about live wagering, this is going to become it's extremely popular in Europe. It is becoming more and more popular in the U.S. I actually talked to some people. One poker player calls it pre-flop versus post-flop betting. He says, why would anyone bet 
a pre-flop bet when you have no information about what's going to transpire. Why not just wait and watch some of the game and then go ahead and make your bet? And another advantage is all the lines are the same pre-flop when you shop. It's so hard to get any value at all in the NFL, but then it's the wild, wild west on the live wagering. If you try to make a bet at the beginning of the second quarter on the Bears, the money lines were anywhere from like minus a buck 35 all the way up to minus a dollar 60. There was such a wide disparity in the lines at that point in time that shopping can really help you. I find if I really like a game, oftentimes I only bet half my bet before the game starts because I want to go ahead and take advantage of it, on, especially on a Sunday or Monday night game where a lot of shops are going to be dealing the game live. And I always hold back a lot so I can get down more during the live wagering. Live wagering, it is the future. Check it out. It is my best bet, pregame.tv.